What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is The End Times. So far, we've gone through why hell is described as the second death, the lake of fire, a place of outer darkness. So for this video, let's get into why hell is described as a place of gnashing of teeth. Jesus is recorded describing hell as this seven times. Six times in the book of Matthew, once in the book of Luke. The first time was when he entered Capernaum and encountered the centurion asking for healing for his servant. When Jesus saw the measure of faith that the centurion had, he said that no one in Israel had greater faith. So let's read that. Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 through 13. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go and he goes, and to another, come and he comes, and to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Jesus warned those who followed him that many of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would miss out on the kingdom of heaven and be thrown into hell in a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus made a similar statement when he was making his way to Jerusalem, Luke chapter 13, verse 22 through 30. He went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves are cast out. And people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Again, Jesus makes this comparison of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob missing out on the kingdom of God while the Gentile believers are reclining at table with the patriarchs. Then he explains that they, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who don't have the faith needed, who don't pick up their cross and follow him, will be thrown into hell, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. After reading these two verses, I started to wonder if Jesus was only comparing weeping and gnashing of teeth to the Jews who rejected him. But after reading the other verses in context, I quickly saw that this was not the case. Matthew chapter 13 verse 36 through 43 says, Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The son of man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has heirs, let him hear. The field is the whole world. The good seed is sowed by Jesus, and the weeds are sown by the devil. The good seed grows into wheat, according to Matthew 13, verse 24 through 30. This would represent the church, the body of Christ. The weeds are those who don't believe in nor pick up their cross and follow Jesus. Those are thrown into hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So now this begs the question, what does gnashing of teeth mean? 
Now, I originally thought that this was referring to the amount of pain hell will cause you, like clenching your jaw in pain. But after much research, I no longer believe that that's what Jesus was describing. The phrase gnashing of teeth only occurs in the New Testament, but the variation of that phrase is used five times in the Old Testament. Psalms chapter 37 verse 12 through 13 says, The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. Lamentations 2 verse 16, All your enemies rail against you. They hiss, they gnash their teeth, they cry. We have swallowed her. Ah, this is the day we longed for. Now we have it, we see it. Job 16 verse 9. He has torn me in his wrath and hated me. He has gnashed his teeth at me. My adversary sharpens his eyes against me. Each time a variation of gnashing of teeth is used in scripture, it's always used to describe someone attacking and someone under attack. Jesus was describing hell as a place of torment, as an enemy of God. Now, is there evidence that proves this? Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day or night, these worshippers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of its name. Now according to the angel in John's vision, those who worship the beast and his image and receive the mark of the beast will be thrown into hell and tormented forever and ever. So forever and ever means forever and ever. There isn't an ending. Like there's not a time after they're thrown into hell that they now get peace because hell is for all eternity. It's forever and ever. Don't let anyone deceive you. There is no grace after hell. There is nothing after hell. That's for all eternity. Now, this isn't the only time that we see this either. When Peter asked Jesus how many times he needed to forgive his brother for sinning against him, Jesus responded with the parable of the unforgiving servant. This servant was forgiven a debt of approximately $22.8 billion, but when it came to forgiving his fellow servant of about $45,000, if you're using the maximum amount possible, he didn't want to. So even though he was forgiven about $22.8 billion in debt, he refused to forgive his fellow servant who only owed him about $45,000. Now this is what Jesus said about that servant. Matthew chapter 18, verse 31 through 35. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This isn't talking about right now. We're living in a time of grace. This is talking about judgment day and the servant then being thrown into hell for his unforgiveness. Now I wanna bring to your attention the word jailers in verse 34. This is the Greek word on the screen, which means torturer. Jesus said that the unforgiving servant would be delivered over to the torturers until his debt was paid, which we'll get into deeper in the next video. While you guys ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up for you guys real quick. Jesus refers to hell as a place of gnashing of teeth. This isn't because of the pain that the people will be in, but that they'll be tortured in hell. That there are torturers who are tormenting those in hell because they've chosen to be an enemy of God. So those torturers are gnashing their teeth against those in hell on behalf of God. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.